Please, sir. Uh, Scrooge and Marley's, I believe. Yes, sir. Is there anything I can do for you, sir? Well, if it is quite convenient, I should like to speak with a member of the firm. Mm. You, uh, you wish to see me, I presume, sir? Yes. Have I the pleasure of addressing Mr. Scrooge or Mr. Marley? Mr. Marley's been dead these seven years. Oh. Dead as a doornail. Died seven years ago, this very night. Oh. We took the liberty of calling on you at your chambers, Mr. Scrooge, uh, thinking that you would have finished business for the day, but we failed to make anyone here. That's not surprising. I'm the only person who lives there. Right. Consequently, we have called here. At this festive season of the year, Mr. Scrooge, it seems more than usually desirable to make some slight provision for the poor and destitute who suffer terribly at this present time. Many thousands are in want of common necessities. Hundreds of thousands are in want of common comfort, sir. Are there no prisons? Yes, plenty of prisons. The union workhouses are still in operation, eh? They are still. I wish I could say they were not. Warlaw and the treadmill are in full vigor, then, eh? Both very busy, sir. Ah, very glad to hear it, sir. I thought from what you said that something had occurred to interfere with them in their useful course. Very glad to hear it, sir. Very glad to hear it. Under the impression that they scarcely furnish Christmas cheer of mind and body for the multitude, some few of us are endeavouring to raise a fund to buy the poor of London meat and drink and means of warmth. We choose this time because this is the time of all others when want is keenly felt and abundance rejoices. Now, what shall I put you down for? Nothing. Nothing? Oh, oh I see. You wish to be anonymous. I wish to be left alone, sir. Since you ask me what is my wish, that is my answer. I don't make many myself at Christmas. I can't afford to make a lot of idle people many. I hope to support the institutions we've just mentioned. They cost enough. People are badly off, they'd better go there. Many can't go there. Many would rather die. Well, if they'd rather die, they'd better do it. And decrease the surplus population. Besides, excuse me, sir, I don't know that. But you should know it. It's not my business, sir. A man's got enough to do in this world to mind his own business. Without interfering with a lot of other people's, mine occupies me constantly. Good evening, sir. Allow me to express my regret, sir, if I have said anything. Good evening. Good evening.
May I inquire, Mr. Cratchit, what you're doing with that shovel full of coal? Why, I beg your pardon, sir, but the outer office is intensely cold, and my fire... Dear, dear, your fire! I should have said your fire, sir. Yes, sir. It shows symptoms of going out, and I thought I might venture to replenish it with a small quantity of coal. Yes. Yeah. Well, of course, you know, it's very evident to me, you know, Mr. Cratchit, that you and I left apart. Oh, oh I see no help for it, sir. You don't pay for the coal, so you can afford to be reckless. Therefore, very evident to me, sir, you know, that my interest is not your interest, nor my welfare your welfare. Get on with your work, sir. That'll keep you warm enough. I'm not cold. Why should you be? When I am your senior, <coughs> by a great many years, I fancy. And all about a small shovel full of coal. And then none of your mumbling, you know, none of your mumbling. You... you have a wife and family to support, I understand. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How many children have you got? Around half a dozen, sir. Three boys and three girls. Tut, tut, tut. Can I afford a wife? Yes, sir. Eh? Uh, I mean, no, sir. Have I any children? I don't know, sir. Eh? No... no, sir. How much am I constrained to pay you a week for your services? Fifteen shillings, sir. Eh? Be to your interest, sir, to see that you're worth it. seem by one consent to open their shut hearts freely. And therefore, though it's never put a scrap of gold or silver in my pocket, I believe it has done me good and will do me good. And I say, God bless it. Here, here. Here, here. Mr. Cratchit, if I hear another word from you, you'll keep your Christmas by losing your situation. Dear, 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 dear. Quite a powerful speaker, sir. No wonder you don't go into Parliament. Don't be angry, Uncle. Come, dine with us tomorrow. I'll see you. But why? Why? Why did you get married? Because I fell in love. Because I fell in... Good evening. But you never came to see us before, that heaven. Why give that as a reason for not coming now? Good evening, sir. But I want nothing from you. I ask nothing of you. Well, you won't get it, so you won't be disappointed, will you? We've never had a quarrel to which I've been party. So why not let us part friends? Good evening, sir. Well, I'm sorry with all my heart to find this a relative. I've made the trial in homage to Christmas, and I'll keep my Christmas humor to the last. So a Merry Christmas, Uncle. Good evening, sir. And a Happy New Year. Well, you're a noisy devil. That's what you are, sir. Merry Christmas, Bob Gretchen. And the same to you, sir, and many of them. And not forgetting your good lady, Mrs. Fred. Thank you, Gretchen. A Merry Christmas to you. A Merry Christmas.
ready and willing to quit your work, I notice. <laughs> it's seven o'clock, sir. That clock's fast. By the way, I... I suppose you'll want all day off tomorrow, eh? Well, sir, if, if, if it's quite convenient... It isn't convenient. It isn't fair. If I was to stop half a crown for it, oh, you'd be mightily ill-used, I'd be bound, wouldn't you? Don't think I'm ill-used, do you? When I have to pay a whole day's wages. No work. It only happens once a year, sir. That's a pretty excuse for picking a man's pocket every 25th of December. Well, I... I suppose you've got to have it. Yeah, there's the key. You see, sir, that you're here all the earlier next morning. Good night, sir, and a Merry Christmas. Ah, humbug. speech now, or will you let the ladies and gentlemen continue to enjoy themselves? Call silence for the loyal toast. My lords, ladies and gentlemen, pray silence for the Right Honourable, the Lord Mayor of London. My lord. My lords, ladies and gentlemen, her most gracious majesty, the Queen.
these people out of their wits.
Look well, Ebenezer Scrooge, for only you can see me. What do you want with me? Much. Who oh, are you? In life, I was your partner, Jacob Marley. In life? Why do you trouble me? It is required of everyone that the spirit within him should walk abroad among his fellow men. And if that spirit goes not forth in life, it is condemned to do so after death. My spirit never walked beyond the narrow limits of our money-changing hall. So I cannot rest. I cannot stay. I cannot linger anywhere. You... are fettered. Why? I wear the chain I forged in life. I made it, link by link. Would you know the weight and length of the coil you bear yourself? Speak words of comfort to me, Jacob Marley. Speak words of comfort. Comfort? I have none to give. I am here to warn you, to save you, if that be possible. To warn? To save me? From what? From such a fate as mine. To wander through the world and witness what I cannot share, but might have shared on Earth and turn to happiness. But you were always a good man of business, Jacob. Business. Mankind should have been my business. Charity, forbearance, benevolence, all were my business, as they should be yours. Now heed me, for my time is short. You will be haunted by three spirits. Without their visits, you cannot hope to shun the path I tread. You shall behold the visions of a Christmas past, a Christmas present, and a Christmas yet to come. Expect the first when the clock strikes midnight tonight. Molly! Look to see me no more. Molly! show you the things that have been. Look back beyond the gulf of vanished years. The money is due and must be paid. But, sir, that's impossible. Then I shall have no alternative but to take immediate steps to recover it. But, sir, you must see that if... That is the way I conduct my business. 
don't mean sell us up. That is precisely what I do mean. But, sir, I couldn't work in the hospital. Mr. Scrooge, I beg of you. Good day. You can't do this. You can't be so unjust. Give us a little more time. A week. Please. Come in. So it is true. What do you mean? What they say. That you're a man without pity, without remorse, who weighs everything in the scale of profit and loss. Bill! I heard. I couldn't help you. What? This is business. If I were to allow sentiment to enter this counting house, I should be in the bankruptcy court within a year. And as for that couple who've just gone out, well, set your mind at rest about them. Worthless, shiftless pair. Had my good money. Now I want to avoid paying it back. Your money. Your good money. They asked you for a little breathing space, a little time in which to pay. That's all. Enough of this, Bill. I'm ready to make allowances for your feelings as a woman. But I must ask you to leave my business affairs alone. When you marry me, I shall insist. Leave of your senses. I've tried hard not to believe what they've said about you. I'd give anything not to believe it now. But the evidence of my own eyes and ears, I must believe. You are not all this so, But I can see now that one passion and one passion only engrosses you. Gain. What then? Even if it were so, I'm not changed towards you. You are changed. Changed in every way. You're not the man you were. Our contract's an old one, made when we were poor and content to be so. May you be happy, alone, in the life you've chosen. Now look and see the happiness you have missed. this afternoon. Oh, who was it? You guess. How can I? I don't know. It wasn't Mr. Scrooge. Mr. Scrooge it was. I passed his office window, and as it was not shut up and there was a candle inside, I could scarcely help see him. His partner's on, on the point of death, I hear. And there he sat, alone. Quite alone in the world, I do believe. Spirit, I cannot bear it. Haunt me no more. I told you these were the shadows of the things that have been. That they are what they are. Do not blame me. Take me back! <laughs> Twelve o'clock, I know it is.
men and know me better man. I am the ghost of Christmas present. Look upon me. You have never seen the like of me before. Never. I've never walked forth with the younger members of my family, meaning I am very young. My elder brothers, born in those later years. I don't think I have. I'm afraid I have not. Have you many brothers, Spirit? More than 1,800. A tremendous family to provide for. Spirit, conduct me where you will. Already I have been forth under compulsion and learned the lesson which is working now. If you have aught to teach me, let me profit by it. Touch my robe. And you shall see how you are poor clerk with his paltry 15 shillings a week, which you so grudgingly dole out to him, keeps Christmas. Touch my robe. church saw him because he was a cripple and that it might be pleasant for them to remember upon a Christmas day who made lame beggars walk and blind see. But he's growing stronger. Yes, 
growing strong and hearty. I wish I could believe you, Bob. But I'm afraid. For what we are about to receive, may the Lord make us truly thankful. Amen. I can already vouch for it. And its favor. Well, I know surpassed my utmost expectations. Yes! With the mashed potato Ooh. and the apple sauce, Ooh. it will, I am sure, present a delightful combination that we shall remember until our dying day. Yes! Delicious. Delicious. Mm. That's the best goose we ever had, Mother. Yes, indeed. Oh, yes. Mm. Oh, I've eaten too much. <laughs> and even now. We haven't eaten at all. <laughs> you laugh, laugh. I envy them. <laughs> My dear, regarding the momentous question, pudding. You look pale, my love. And nervous. I am oh. nervous, my dear. And anxious about that pudding. Pray heaven all will be well. I'll go and fetch it. Let me come and help too, Mother. You shall, my darling. <laughs> I'm anxious about that pudding. You know, your mother's been gone a long time. Supposing the pudding has broken in turning it out. What? Or supposing that somebody has got over the back wall and stolen it. Oh, ah. without an owner, carefully preserved. If these shadows remain unaltered in the future, the child will die. Oh, tell me that he'll be spared. If he is like to die, had he not better do it and decrease the surplus population? You would. Man, if man you be in heart, not adamant, Bear that wicked cant until you have discovered what the surplus is and where it is. Will you decide what men shall live, when men shall die? It may be that in the sight of heaven you are more worthless and less fit to live than millions like this poor man's child. I give you Mrs. Scrooge, the founder of the feast. Founder of the feast, indeed. I wish I had him here. I'd give him a piece of my mind to feast upon. I hope he'd have a good appetite for it. But, my dear, the children, Christmas Day. It should be Christmas Day, I'm sure, on which one drinks the health of such an odious, stingy, hard, unfeeling man as Mr. Scrooge. You know he is, Robert. Nobody knows it better than you do, poor fellow. My dear, Christmas Day. Well, I'll drink his health for your sake and the days, not his. He'll be very merry and very happy, I've no doubt. Here's Mr. Scrooge's health. Now, children, all together, Mr. Scrooge's health. Mr. Mr. Scrooge's, Scrooge's health. health. Mr. Scrooge's health. Mr. 
And now, Tiny Tim will sing to us. Yes, yes I do. do sing. What shall I sing? Hark the Herald Angels. Yes, yes, Hark the Herald Angels. Hark the Herald Angels sing. Glory to the newborn King. Peace on earth and mercy. Come now and see how others keep Christmas. and he won't even come and dine with us. <laughs> well, what are you going to play at? Riddles! Good. I'll ask you one. <coughs> what does the following represent? An animal. Rather a disagreeable animal. A savage animal. An animal that grunts and groans and talks and lives in London. And walks the streets. Yes. And isn't even made a show of. No. Doesn't have a menagerie. No. Isn't a horse. No. 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 Ghost of the future, I fear you more. Any spectre I have seen, you are about to show me shadows of the things that have not been, but will be in the time to come. And as I hope to live to be another man from what I was, I am prepared to bear you. I don't know much about it either way. I only know he's dead. When did he die? Last night, I believe. Why, what was the matter with him? I thought he'd never die. <laughs> Heaven knows. What's he done with his money? Left it to his company, perhaps. He hasn't left it to me. That's all I know. 
<laughs> how are you? Very well, how are you? So old Nick has got his own at last. Yes, so I'm told. <laughs> cold, isn't it? Seasonable for Christmas time. Oh, yeah. You're not a skater, I suppose. Oh, no, no, I've got something else to think about. <laughs> <laughs> I do not see myself in my accustomed place. Where am I? Why am I not there? Let the charwoman alone to be the first. Let the laundress alone to be the second. And let the undertaker's men alone to be the third. Look here, old Joe, here's a chance. If we hadn't all three met here without meaning it. <laughs> you, you couldn't have met in a better place. Come into the parlor. Come on. if you were afraid, woman. Who's the worst for the loss of a few things like this? Not a dead man, I hope. Open this bundle, old Joe, and let me know the value of it. I ain't afraid to be the first, nor afraid for them to see it. Sixpence. Now mine, Joe. Ha! Eight shillings. I always give too much to ladies. It's a weakness of mine. <laughs> and now unto my bundle, Joe. Say you took him down, rings and all, with him lying there. Why not? You was born to make your fortune, <laughs> and you will certainly do it. <laughs> Here, don't drop the oil on my blankets. His blankets? Whose else's? He's likely to take cold without them, I dare say. <laughs> I hope he didn't die of anything catching. Oh, don't you be afraid of that. Ah, you can look through that shirt until your eyes ache and you won't find a hole in it. It's the best he had. It'd have been wasted if it hadn't been for me. What do you call wasting of it? Putting it on him to be buried in, to be sure. I took it off him. <laughs> <laughs> Calico's just as becoming to the body. <laughs> he couldn't have looked uglier than he did in that one. <laughs> 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 This is 
is the end of it, you see? He frightened everyone away from him when he was alive to profit us when he was dead. I see, I see. The case of this unhappy man might be my own. My life tends that way now. Merciful heavens! What is that? Is this the man they spoke of? Neglected. Robbed. Hate it. Can you not show me some tenderness connected with death? by candlelight. I wouldn't show weak eyes to your father when he comes home from work. It must be near his time. Past it, rather. I think he walks a little slower than he used these last few evenings, Mother. Yes. I've known him walk with... I've known him walk with Tiny Tim upon his shoulder very fast indeed. So am I, often. So am I. But he was very light to carry. And his father loved him so, it was no trouble. No trouble. There's your father at the door. Well, my dear. Well, father. Mm. <laughs> my dear, you have been quit. It'll be done long before Sunday. Sunday? You went today then, Robert? Yes, my dear. I've seen where our tiny Tim is to rest. It'd have done you good to see how green a place it is. Hmm. Oh, you see it often. I promised him that we would walk there over Sunday.
my little child. Tiny Tim, thy childish essence was from God. I met Mr. Scrooge's nephew today, and he said to me, I'm heartily sorry for you, Mr. Cratchit, and heartily sorry for your good wife. Though how he knew that, I don't know. Knew what, my dear? Why, that you were a good wife. Everybody knows that. Well observed, my boy. Mm. And he said, if there's any service that I can do for you, pray come to me. It almost seemed as though he had known our tiny Tim and felt with us. And I'm sure we shall none of us forget him, nor this first parting there has been among us. Never, Father. And I know that when we recollect how patient and how mild he was, although he was but a little child, we shall not quarrel easily among ourselves and forget poor Tiny Tim in doing it. Never, I'm very happy. Very happy. Now, Spirit, tell me what man that was whom we saw lying dead. Nearer to the stone at which you point, tell me, are these the shadows of the things that will be? Or are they the shadows of the things that may be only? Jacob Marley, heaven and Christmas time be praised for this. I thank you. 
my knees. I thank you, Jacob. On my knees. Oh. No. They're not torn down. They're not torn down. Ah! Jump along, then go to the box room and get me out my best clothes. I want that big turkey. 
turkey of yours. Bring it round to my place at once. My friend will show you the way. <laughs> A Merry Christmas. Around hundred. Yes, and not a farthing less. Not oh, a farthing less. Sir. I'm afraid there are many back payments included oh, in it. Oh, my dear, Mr. Scrooge. You come round and see me? You we will come will. round? Oh, we, we will. will. Oh, we will. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bless you, gentlemen. Bless Thank you. you. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that won't come and dine with you? Uncle Scrooge. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Still, what's the consequence? He won't lose much of a dinner. Oh. Indeed. Well, I think he'll lose a very good dinner. <laughs> <laughs> Your master in, my dear? Yes, sir. Can I see him, my love? He's in the dining room, sir. I'll show you in. He, he knows me. He, he knows me. <laughs> you sit there. Fred. Bless my soul, who's this? It is I, your Uncle Scrooge. I've come to dinner. Will you let me in, Fred? Why, it's Uncle Scrooge. It can't be. Will I? A Merry Christmas to you, Uncle. Come in. Come in and join us. Welcome, Uncle. And a Merry Christmas. Thank you, my dear. A Merry Christmas to you all. A Merry Christmas. So I did.